Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Well, it's fridge freezer day today. Uh, our old one is being upgraded, so I'm at home this morning. I've been defrosting the old one. That's gone and new one's coming in this afternoon. So I've got time to make a quick video. So we'll get on with that now. To chit or not to chit? That is the question. And um, I'm not even sure really I've got a good enough answer for you, but I'll try my best and explain my point of view on this if I can. I've just had a little bundle of pink fur apples uh, delivered. They came, well, two days ago. Um, you know, lovely tuber. No chit on them at all. That's how they came. This is a King Edward. Uh, that's out of my potato storage. They're uh, starting to sprout in there. And these things are next to useless. They'll just break off. So once you put that in soil, it's you know it's it's gonna they're gonna go away and they're gonna have to start again so that's useless what's happened with these is they've been stored in darkness in a cool dark area it's got too warm for them and they've started to sprout they think it's the season to grow and because they were in a dark area these start stretching out for life to light they become etiolated um, and that just basically means they're stretching looking for light and that's why they're that pale color um why they're yeah, next to useless. So what gardeners do, um, they will they will get a bunch of these and they will stack them in trays like this and they'll leave them out in some, you know, a frost-free area in some lights, like a windowsill or somewhere like that. Or I used to do it in this greenhouse here because it's fairly warm but frost-free. And then these... These, those little sprouts that are on there will grow on the top of these potatoes and they'll grow to a very small size because they've got the light that they need. They don't need to stretch out and become etiolated. And that's the ideal solution for getting your plants in the ground and then they get away. Now, on a potato, there's uh, a typical one. Okay, this is a funny potato. These are pink fair apples and they're very long tubers, gorgeous to eat. But they'll have a rose end and a pointy end. And generally the blunt end is what they call the rose end. And it's where you can see all where the little sprouts will grow from. So you stick that, that end up like so. And you do that with all your potatoes and chip them. Now, I'm in two minds about this because I don't think chitting is necessary. Um, first earlies, yes, because they're a quick crop. They're in 10 to 12 weeks. Some of them, I think, Swift and Rocket will crop in eight weeks. But generally 10 to 12 weeks and you want them out the ground. So, yeah, chit them, plant them a foot apart in a grid-like fashion and you'll get a crop ultra quick and you'll be eating them in the summer when you want to be eating salad potatoes with with the salad stuff that's coming out of your allotment and the fresh herbs and, and you're sat in the sunshine and, and that's perfect. But for main crop potatoes, you don't need to do it. That's all ready and raring to go. Why would I want to start that off early when I can just put it in the ground and grow it? Think about it. Have you ever seen a farmer that chits? I haven't. They just plant them and they grow. Now, we're growing them for a, just a few potatoes to eat. Farmers are growing them to make money, to pay for the diesel, for their tractors, to pay for their whole farm. They know what they're doing. They don't chit. They don't need to. Now, a few years ago, I did an experiment. I planted, uh, I think it was about six rows of potatoes. Uh, three rows had been chitted and three rows hadn't. And when they all came out, they were all main crops. When they came out, there was no difference at all. No difference in the tuber size, no difference in the yield from each plant, and no noticeable difference in the harvest weights at all. Which just says to me that, you know, pop them in the ground when they're ready to go, and you'll get a crop. Now, the other thing is that if I was to put all my potatoes in trays in a greenhouse to chip them, it would be taking up so much space I couldn't grow anything else. So what I do is I do put them in a tray and this will now go in the shed along with my other potatoes that I've got in storage. If I see signs of those chits coming, 
I will pull them out of the shed and I will put them on the bench because I would rather grow chits that are short and stubby and that darkish colour that you want from a chit as opposed to those long etiated ones where they're in a dark shed. So that's the only occasion where you'll see you'll see these on my bench in the greenhouse um, with chits growing on them and at planting time is because it's got too warm for them in the storage. And that's the only time I chit them. I've got some Aaron pilots coming in a, in, a, in a week or so. I will chit those. First earlies, I want them nice and quick. But for the rest of them, they're going to be in, in the ground for four or five months. And they're easily going to catch up, possibly overtake. So I just don't see the actual point in chitting them at all. Um, unless it's to prevent that etiolated pale green shoot that you know is going to snap off as soon as you put it into soil uh, because then that's wasted the energy that potato's grown those three shoots and that energy is gone from that potato so i prefer for all the energy to go into one growing thing at one time and the other thing to watch for is um you'll see a lot of gardeners and you'll see a lot of videos coming up about chitting potatoes and about getting them in the ground you've got to be careful of your last frost date in your area so if you let's say you live in hampshire just type it into google hampshire last frost dates and it'll give you a guide and you want to be putting your potatoes in the ground so that the shoots emerge after that last frost date because if your plant grows up and it's I know, four, five, six inches out of the ground and you get a frost, it will knock that plant back. So all your advantage that you've gained from chitting and planting early is gone because that plant now has to, it'll stop it momentarily from growing. Then it will regather itself and send up more shoots and get going again. So you're just halting your progress. So better planting a couple of weeks later and getting on with it. Having said that, I've always planted for many years I planted my my spuds on Good Friday and the first year I recognized the days because it was very early that year it was the end of March now this year I believe Good Friday is on the 2nd of April so that's why I've always planted mine at the end of March I'm going to pop a couple of photos up now and show you I was confident enough planting at the end of March by planting them into a dug furrow so about six inches under the ground covering them in soil and then i raked up soil another six inches above that so they had 12 inches to grow before they came out of the soil and by that time all chance of frost had gone in my area now this year because i'm planting in plots in pots and uh, because i can protect them in the polytunnel i'm starting earlier and i will be planting those pots up at the start of march maybe even a week earlier if i can get organized but what i'm looking for in particular is a couple of weeks of reasonable weather to start that growth so i, I don't if it if it's still frosty and still icy at that time then i'll delay the planting for another week i want a, a couple of weeks of reasonable weather to get them going so that's my take on potatoes, uh, to chit or not to chit. I say, I'd rather not. Uh, I just think it takes up extra space. I say farmers don't chit, they know what they're doing. Them, they grow potatoes to make money. So I know there'll be plenty of people popping on questions and talking to, well, I always chit, it always works for me. And that's fair enough. It's one of those things that you either do or you don't. It's like me with my sweet peas. The guide from the experts told me not to soak my seeds. I still do it every year because that's what I've always done. And it's the same thing with potatoes. <laughs> You'll have your preference. So whatever you grow, good luck. But that's what I'll be doing with mine. <laughs> right, so that's my uh, take on chitting potatoes. I'll chip first early because I want them in and out as quickly as possible for the summer crop. Um, for the second early and main crops, I don't bother. The only time I'll actually put them in some light to grow proper chits is if they start sprouting in the storage. Otherwise, I'll just leave them in there. And I'd rather have a potato like that with no chits on and plant that and let that get on with it. That's all its food it needs in there to get it going. And I'd rather have it all concentrated into one growing spurt, not start them at home. That's just my take on it. So anyway, that's it for today. Look after yourselves. Please stay safe and I'll see you very, very soon. Toronto.